Hey everyone, I'm Naomi Meredith, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to navigate the category tabs at the top of Google Classroom from the teacher side and also from the student side. Some of these things I will go more into detail in other video tutorials, but I just wanted you to understand what these mean and how you can navigate them successfully. Um, again, we go to classroom.google.com or however your school uh, wants you to get to Google Classroom. As a teacher, you have different categories at the top and we will go to those in a second. We have the stream, we have classwork, people, grades, and then settings, which is a little gear in the top right. It doesn't say settings, but super helpful. Here I am in my teacher view and you can see at the top here are those categories and here is that little gear. First, we're gonna talk about this, the stream. So in the stream, this is where you can see everything that teachers post as a running list. This can be something that can be turned off. And I say teachers because in Google Classroom, you can have multiple co-teachers and I'll show you at the other place where you're going to add that. So you can see that running list of assignments and materials. You can also post quick announcements and resources here on this page. This isn't typically where you create in-depth materials for your students. There's another place for that, but this is is just quick things. Hey, check this out really, really quick. You can also view upcoming work and then here's where you get that classroom code to share with students, which we talked about in another video. Here's that classroom code at the top. Here are assignments that I have posted in this class. And as a teacher, you have different options when you click those three dots. You can change the order of things. So if you want it to go in a different place, you can move where that assignment goes. You can um, copy this link if you wanna share just that link um, or edit that assignment. Um, here is that upcoming work tab. So I can see everything that is upcoming and what I need to do and review. I'm gonna go back to my class. And then this is where you can just post quick little things. I wouldn't do this to create like full on assignments. This is not where you put kids work where you wanna make a copy. This is just like a quick link, a quick resource. So something like, hey guys, check out this awesome, video tutorial ah, that can help you with your work. And then you can add that link here. So again, this is just some quick stuff. You're like, ooh, I need to put this in really, really quick. And then you can post that for the kids. You can also schedule it and draft it out if you would like, okay? Next, we have the classwork tab, which you'll probably be in this tab the most. This is where you assign your most detailed work for kids and add in all those awesome layers. This is also where you can see individual student work. I'll show you a brief overview with that, but I'll create another video to go even deeper into this. You also can view your Google Calendar, all your assignments with due dates link to your Google Calendar, which is super great. And uh, Google Drive, our Google Classroom automatically creates a folder in your Google Drive. So if you set something up in Google Classroom and you go in your drive, you're like, oh my gosh, I have this random folder that says classroom, that's okay. Google Classroom did it and do not delete it. It's kind of hard to get back, um, but it, that's what that classroom folder is. So you can access work that way if you needed to. Here's our classwork tab and I have different topics which I'll show you how to create. This create button will be your best friend. So up here, we can create those different types of assignments. Assignments you'll probably use the most, and this is where you create more detailed types of work, which again, I'm gonna have a video tutorial on all these types of things. This is just more about categories. Quiz assignments, if you want something more with a grade, you can create a question that students can respond to on the main feed and respond to one another, which is super fun. You can create materials, so nothing for a grade, but if there's a, a whole bank of resources you wanna share with students, video links, websites, podcasts, this is a great place to group it all together into one post. And you can also reuse posts. So if your class does similar things week after week just to build routines, this is a great option as well. Topics are those big words that you see down there. So um, in my class, I have topics. So STEM, math, writing, reading, you can do them as subjects. If you are doing this for remote learning, having topics set as weeks, 
is very helpful for kids to visually see what their work is going to be. Um, as, like I said, I have topics that I created the work for and underneath are the assignments that I have posted right now for my students. Students do have this view and I will show you that as well. Okay. Next, we have our people. And so for people, you can add the co-teachers. Co-teachers, once you add them and they accept your invitation, the invitation will go into their email if they have their notifications turned on. If they have them turned off, then they have to log into Google Classroom to accept your invite. Once they are added, they have the same access as you do as a classroom teacher. So just keep that in mind. Um, but it's really helpful having your interventionist and other teachers that work with your class to be all in the same place. You can also add students manually which we showed in another video. And then you can also add parents, and that is up to you. Parents will get um, daily notifications, weekly summaries, and also can see any class announcements. So that's just up to you if you want to invite parents that way. So we have our teachers. You um, put the teacher email here, and then you can add students. And then um, this isn't the Google Education one, but on the Education one, you can invite the parents. Our uh, couple last tabs, we have grades, and this is if you choose to use, depending on what situation you're in or grade level or how you're using Google Classroom, there is a grade book. So once you assign grades to assignments, which we'll show you in another place, once you assign grades, you can see all the grades for each of the activities. This is just saying NA because these two assignments I assign do not have a grade point um, requirement. I assigned it without points. This life cycles assignment has points. So this is super helpful to see it all in one place for you to go to. Last, we have this gear. This is our settings. This is part of Google Classroom. Don't miss that. But in our settings, this is where you can um, add to that name description if you kind of messed up or spelled your own name wrong. This is a good place to do it. You can change that class code. You can change if students can post and comment. I would suggest turning this off to start when you're using Google Classroom. And once you teach students great digital citizenship, I would turn this back on so they know the right way to use class commenting instead of saying, hi, 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 hello, hello, um, but teaching that good digital citizenship. So turn it off to start. And then once you get there, you can um, turn it back on because it can be a helpful tool. Um, you can, like I said on that stream, when you see everything posted, um, just in the order of them posting, it can get overwhelming, especially if you have multiple teachers a part of this class. You can actually hide those notifications, so the stream will actually look empty for the students, and they would go to classwork and see that all organized in topics. That's just a preference, so depending on how organized you are and how you're using with the kids, this could actually be a great tool for them. And then you can also see how you are calculating grades and um, change with those little options. And then with settings, you do actually have to make sure you hit save. So when we think about the student settings, so that was for the teacher, a brief overview. Um, I will go into detail with some of these. I know you probably have burning questions, but I will get to those in another video. So keep watching. Um, we have for the students, they have very similar categories like the teacher, just of course limited um, options for that. So students also have the stream and it looks like the teacher has the running list and I showed you where you can turn that off. And then we, they also have classwork, which they'll probably go to the most. And then they have the people. So here we are in a student view of my class. And they can see, I left the stream on for right now, but they can see they don't have any upcoming work and it's like very encouraging. They can see that little note I posted. They can access their work this way on the stream and click right into it. So they have a little makerspace cardboard airplane video to watch. This is my work that I sent, so um, I have permission to use my own work. Um, and then they can open up their work this way. I wrote private comments to this kid to help them double check what they're doing. And they wrote back to me so they can see the private comments between me and the teacher. So that's really helpful. Their classwork, um, they can view their work this way. 
So they can click into um, each assignment underneath the topics if the teacher created the topics and they can view their assignment that way as well. And it's nice because it will prompt the kids the first time using it how to use all these tools also. They can also add on, and I'll go over this some more, but they can add on other files that go along with the work. They can press this turn in button if that's something you're requiring for your class. That's up to you. You can still see their work whether they press turn on or off anyway. Um, also in their classwork, um, I didn't show this in the teacher view. I mentioned it. But... Um, all their work and due dates, if you put a due date, will link to their Google Calendar. And then students also will have a classroom folder created in their Google Drive that will automatically put their stuff inside. So just their work will go into that Google Drive folder so they can access their work that way if they choose to go that way. Um, the teacher one looks like this. Also, of course, you just have all the kids' stuff. For people, they can see who their teachers are. And I think with the Google Education one, they can email, I think, if that's turned on or off for your school. And they can see their classmates. This class only has one other kid. So they're very, they got really lucky. They have two, another kid in their class. And then they don't have that settings over here. So very similar to the teacher side, just more limited, which I like because as a teacher, you pretty much know what they're going to see for the most part, and they mirror each other pretty well. Of course, the teacher has some more options. So I hope that helps with a good overview of what all those category tabs are in Google Classroom and what they need. Make sure that you subscribe so you can get updated on any other videos that I post and also um, go into more detail about some of these things like adding in assignments and going into depth that way. So thank you so much for your time and I will see you soon. Bye.